What's up, Whoopers? It's Vice here, and hey, we're looking at another EX Pokemon from Paradox Rift. It's Garchomp EX. This one was pretty interesting when it first got revealed. It's got some pretty impressive stats, top down, 320 HP. It's got the Terra effect where it can't be hit on the bench. It's got free retreat, and it's got two really good attacks in the Hydro Lander, 160 damage, accelerate, three energy, three basic fighting energy from your discard pile to your bench Pokemon any way you like. Sonic Dive, being able to target a Pokemon on your opponent's bench for 120 damage. Very reminiscent of a certain Garchomp SP level X from way back in the day. Uh, however, it's got one very glaring weakness, and it's that lightning type weakness that you can see here. Maridon is quite good. Garchomp, you know, there there is an appeal there, right? Because Garchomp is a Pokemon that takes fighting energy, accelerates fighting energy to the board, and so what you sort of lean towards is wanting to tech against the Maridon by including Pokemon that can deal with it. Now, if you look at tournament results over the last, you know, couple of months or so, Garchomp hasn't really been there. It hasn't really, like, done very well in very much of anything. So, what I've done with Garchomp is I've leaned away from trying to band-aid the, the parts that are a bit weak, which is things like the Maridon matchup, and I've tried to lean more into the strengths. And so, when I see a Pokemon with 320 HP, when I see a Pokemon that can attach one energy do 160 damage and accelerate three energy from the discard pile into play, what I've done is gone with the strategy that leans into healing with this excellent supporter that we got in battle styles, Cheryl, which says heal all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon. And if you do discard all energy from the Pokemon that were healed in this way. So the idea with this deck is to set up a board state where you've got multiple Garchomp in play, which, by the way, free retreat, so very easy to pivot between them. And then once you collect damage on one or two Garchomp, you play a Cheryl and erase all that progress that your opponent made on, on your board, whilst also putting your energy back into play, which is the, the drawback of Cheryl, if you like. So uh, it's a very cool strategy. Because I run three Cheryl, I'm looking to use this supporter quite aggressively, right? You take one hit of damage, play a Cheryl, all right? Because if you think about how many turns are in a game of Pokemon cards, there's not that many in the modern form of the game, right? So be aggressive with a supporter like Cheryl. Don't try and squeeze the value out of it by retreating your Garchomp to the bench because you know what's going to happen, right? Your opponent is just going to always have boss's orders in the hand and they're going to finish off that Garchomp if you let that happen. So uh, play the Cheryls aggressively, use Palpad to get them back. And you might be wondering, well, how am I going to get Cheryl every, every single turn? Uh, we run two Gallade. So Gallade is the supporting Pokemon to get this deck underway. And of course, it's got the ever-present Curlia with the refinement. So early on in the game, you're using Curlia to draw through your deck, hit your key cards, and use Gallade with Buddy Catch to get the supporter that you need as required. Curlia has some pretty simple synergy with the deck as well, where you discard the fighting energy early so that your first or, or second Hydro Lander have a few more valid targets in the discard pile to accelerate into play. And just, just to keep things extra cheeky for you, We've got a Luminous Energy in amongst the, the Fighting Energy there, so that you can look to attack with the attack on the Gallade if required. So, um, just to go through the, the rest of the deck, we've got a Manaphy here to protect your, your Curlia more than anything. Uh, we've got just one Terrakion here. The appeal of an attack like Cavern Tackle is that uh, you can take up turns and create like just a really annoying wall for your opponent to have to deal with with cavern tackle and being a fighting type it does give you a small out to deal with the the fighting weak pokemon out there like maridon or or arceus v star and what have you uh moving down we've got an earthen vessel which is great to be able to search out with a few of your targeted supporters 
we play VIP pass, and I'll get to that soon as to why. Um, path to the peak to lock down your opponent just a little bit. We don't have too much need for stadiums in this deck. Path to the peak is great because we're not relying on abilities on rule box Pokemon here. And so what I want to call to attention is the fact that we're using technical machine evolution and this evolution attack to, to get set up. So what I like to do is I like to go second. And then we ideally we have a, an energy in, in hand already. Um, but, you know, if needed, we can play the Arvin to get the Earthen Vessel, and we just go, uh, ideally, we, we set up the bench using VIP and, and Technical Machine Evolution on, on the second turn of, and your first turn, turn of the game. So, it's not always going to happen, and you're just going to have to manage those games as best you can. Maybe you have a slow setup, and you have to wait a couple of turns before you can start evolving with TM Evolution, and that's it's fine, right? It's fine to be a little slow because what you're eventually doing is presenting a board that's very difficult for your opponent to take prizes against. You know, any turn that they attack into your Garchomp is a turn that they potentially, you know, effectively done nothing because you, you're just going to play Cheryl and remove the damage that way. A couple of other cards I want to point you towards we've got the defiance band and the vitality band here so they're pretty important for augmenting your damage numbers vitality band is very good against charizard ex which has a kind of difficult amount of hp for us to deal with at the 330 mark vitality band ups your hydroland uh, damage from 160 to 170 and that helps you hit that damage range uh uh whereas you wouldn't be able to do it uh otherwise so um, so yeah, look, this deck is, it's a lot of fun. It's certainly playable into some of the stronger meta decks out there, but also suffers some pretty weak matchups into others. So your, your experience with it might be hit or miss, but it's very satisfying to play into certain decks that it matches up well into. So look, I've got a game coming up. Please enjoy. And if you like decks like this, consider subscribing to me on YouTube or follow me on Twitch where I'm live several times a week and you can catch me building decks that look like this. All right. So enjoy the games and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks. Radiant Zod would suggest that we probably don't need Manaphy. Well, I mean, almost definitely. But then it becomes a question of, is this Sable Zod? Nope. Alright, so this is a good matchup for us. I think we have a, a really nice, like, stylistic matchup into Charizard EX. Let's go the Artisan here. Immediately use their option against them. I like taking the Gibble. Let's put it on the bench. And we got a second Gibble, where that came from. And we got a VIP. Boomba. Boom, boom. Okay, we can leave the Terrakion out for now. Just for now. Arvin. Okay. And we want the Vessel and the TM. Um, I think that the Remove here has to be... Well, maybe the Pal Pad. I'm going to try the Pal Pad this game. Should I though? I really want to keep Palpad to use with, um, to get back the Cheryls and whatnot, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Path of the Peak, just to make life very difficult. And we're going to go Evolution. And we're going to pick you and you. So we've got two Gabite in the deck, three Curlia. Yeah, not bad, not bad. So, going into their turn, they've got a five-card hand. We've removed their stadium, so they're minus one out for the path. If it sticks, we're in good shape. Pidgeot's not doing anything for them, but maybe they've got a supporter. Fair enough. The Iona comes out. They're looking for a counter stadium to get rid of the path.
There it is. Now, do they have the card combo for the Charizard? Arceus V-Star would suggest yes. A full bench now for our opponent. Starbirth will find the tools required for this turn to work out for them. Candy, Charizard. What are we going to see? Surely not a 5 energy Radiant Zard. Unless... Oh no. Oh my. Now we're now you're cooking. Now we're talking. Now you're talking. Uh so we need to thin as much as we can because we gotta try and draw into an energy here. I'm gonna put the Trachion into play just because it's a good opportunity to do so. Um, I'm not going to play the Irida yet. Because we could draw into the Gallade, which will give us a different supporter to work with. Hey, Fix, hey. So, we'll do this and grab just a, a Gibble here. There's no, no routes, it would seem, so. Alright, let's see what we draw. Dude. Making it tough for us. Making it tough. I almost need the second earthen vessel. This is crazy. Okay. We hit everything off that. So, Garchomp. Alright, we'll go basic energy. Boom. We're going to hit them with the path again. I'm not going to reveal the the cards in my hand. We'll just go Hydrolander. And we'll put an energy on the, other, on the Gabite. So they don't have enough to work with the Terrakion just yet. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad. Arvin will give us the defiance band or the what we what we need in this position is vitality band to two shot the, the Charizard. And then we're gonna start looping them with the, the Cheryl. Cheryl can be quite daunting to have to deal with. And I don't know if Charizard's got the greatest amount of tools. Of course, it is a problem after a certain number of prizes. At four prizes taken, it's not one hit KOing. So at the five prize mark, Charizard gets the one hit KO, which is interesting. And I'm sure Path to the Peak is not making it very easy for them. Rope! Rope! Bruh. Um, so this is like candy... Candy Chomp. I think this is fine. Ah, uh, Blustery Wind. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, I'm I'm happy with my selection there. They achieve a couple of things with that turn. They keep the prize race going, and they remove the stadium. And that's it. We've only got room for two paths in this deck, so well done to them. Let's draw some cards, shall we? Remove the VIP. Fine span to the hand. To refine a level ball. I think that is expendable here. 
We naturally draw into the Garchomp, which is nice. Um, I don't know what we want in play at this point. Because it doesn't really... It doesn't really help too much to have another Gibble. It looks like we're just going to be thinning the deck anyway. I think using Hydrolander here is probably worth too. Because we can snipe it with Sonic Dive. We've got to draw into that energy, though. That's what we're in need of. In the meantime, they've got to figure out how to navigate the turn upcoming, right? They get to evolve into the Charizard, sure, but what are you doing? You, you do some damage to the Garchomp, and then what? Alright, it's not that exciting. not that exciting. Charizard comes into play. Infernal Rain searches the deck for energy and puts it into play. Switching out the Pidgeot to the safety of the bench, but as we know, Sonic Dive is capable of finding them. So what would be really nice is if we could draw energy. I would really, really like to draw energy here. So let's let's use one refinement. Okay, not quiet. Not quiet. I want to thin the deck here. I'm going to go Ultra Ball. I'm going to get rid of these two. Yeah. Grab Gallade. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to thin the deck before the second refinement. So, we're going to use Buddy Catch here. We'll grab the Cheryl. And then the rest of the turn will be dictated by what we draw off this one. So I'm going to go refine. What I'm going to discard here... I kind of want to discard the switch. Because I don't think that my opponent is ever going to stall or anything like that. I'm going to discard it. I think I value the Arvin. Okay, that's a little annoying. Defiance Band. Like so. We're going to Cheryl. And remove that damage. Retreat. Hydrolander. And we're going to start looping on the Charizard here. Put the energy onto the other Garchomp. And so what will happen is... Okay, we get a rerun of that turn. They attack the Garchomp. We've got another Cheryl in the hand. And then we Palpad both of them back. And they've got to somehow get through five Cheryls this game. Which they may not be able to do. If they're grabbing boss's orders to get rid of the Gallade, you know, that's okay too, because we have a second Gallade in this deck. Alright. Another Charizard hits the board, but just how long are they going to be able to keep up this effort? You know? How long are they going to be able to outmaneuver us? With the Charizard. We've only taken the one prize. So they're not one-shotting our Garchomps. There's a Gallade as sort of expected. Sort of expected outcome. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm going to promote the one without the band. We'll see how we go. So there's an energy... 
I kind of want to knock out the, the Pidgeot. I'm just going to go... Boom. Uh, we might... Draw a little bit too. I'm going to keep the Iono, discard the Arvin. Irida, Arvin, Irida, Arvin. I'm going to play the Irida. And what we're doing is we're just thinning. We're just thinning. Could play the Super Rod, actually. We'll grab you. We'll grab you. Grab you. Or, we do it like this. And we'll just leave the Gibbles in the discard pile. No mana fee, so we can use Sonic Dive. Knock out the Pidgeot. And remove their search. So now, they've... They've lost their ability to target very exact cards from their deck, right? And this is great, you know. If they don't have boss's orders, they're sort of stuck attacking our Garchomp. They're still not getting a one-hit KO because 180 plus 90, 270, not enough. Not enough. Two energy in the discard pile. We can prep this Terrakion. Alright, Niono is... that. That's okay. We've got draw with the Curlia. And Arvin to boot. And energy to work with. It would have been nice to maintain those cards, but never mind. Letting it rock with the Charizard in the active is interesting, but perhaps required. Um, ooh. I kind of want to keep all these cards, right? I kind of want to keep them all. But let's let's just go through it slowly. We definitely need to Cheryl. I think what I want to do is refinement the fighting energy. Because we've got the one on the bench to work with. Right? Because this has already taken quite a lot of damage from the, the previous Defiance Band attack. I'm going to put down the routes. Routes is pretty good. We'll retreat into the Garchomp. Three in the discard pile is kind of nice. I don't need to show the rest of the cards in my hand. I don't need to play them just because I've got them, right? So I think I'm going to go Hydrolander. Yes. And I'm going to go two on the Terrakion. We'll go one, two, and then one over here. And now we're in really good shape. And that Arceus is also a win con. If we just draw into boss's orders, which we should should be in the deck, yeah. So if we draw into boss's orders or the, the Gallade, of which there is now two in the deck, and I don't believe we've shuffled the order um, since being Ionode. Yeah, the only thing we played was a Cheryl, right? Oh. No, didn't we? We super rotted, I think. A anyhow, we're in we're in a pretty good spot. We could just win next turn by knocking out the Arceus. That is a worry, though. How much damage that uh, this, this Charizard's doing. That is a worry. Let's see if we can make this happen. Mmm. Refine. Whoa, dude. Dude. Okay. Let's swag a little bit. Rare candy into the Gallade. Buddy catch. Wow, what a game. This was a really good demonstration of how this deck works. Wait! The game's not over. It's not over. Uh-oh. Wait, it's not over. It's not over. I should have just gone Iono. Oh. Oh. I'm going to be betrayed by my own... Um... 
I'm gonna be betrayed by my own uh, overconfidence here. I should have gone buddy catch for Iono. I, I just assumed that I would do enough damage with Cavern Tackle to one hit KO the Arceus. GG. This is for sure GG. Like, unless they have counter catch. No, counter catcher wouldn't work. Uh, escape rope would work. Escape rope would work. How many bosses were they down to? Yeah. We just detach the energy and win here. Yeah, almost, almost stuffed it. Almost stuffed it for myself. Wow. Wow, dude. Ended up being the optimal play. I almost, I almost threw it. It was kind of a throw. I should have used Gallade. And gotten Iono. Uh, rather than the play that I did. But it worked out. So I'm pretty happy about that. Look, this will probably make its way into a YouTube video. Because I think that uh, the, the, the flow of the game sort of represented a pretty good example of what you could do with the Garchomp. And leveraging its HP, the effect of the attack, and a healing uh, option in the Cheryl. So... Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy stuff like this, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube and following me on Twitch, where I'm live all the time. Alright, thanks. Cheers.